the one who had moved the assembly in respect to the... Very well. You may go ahead as I put my thoughts together. Uh, I thank you very kindly, Mr. Speaker, sir. The, in response to what my learned friend has raised, the application or the objection had nothing to do with the public participation as cited. We simply raised an objection that goes to the roots of the ability to enjoy proceedings that will appear fair to all parties. My objection was premised on the non-derogable right to a fair hearing. Council has addressed you that the deponent of that affidavit, Juan Jomo, was responding to the deputy president's uh, response. There's nothing that can be far from the truth. And this is a witness who is being brought to panel beat or to attempt to panel beat the case for the National Assembly. The question and the test, Mr. Speaker, sir, is shall we suffer prejudice? Shall our rights be deemed to have been held? And, the, and that is the non-derogable right to a fair hearing. This is not a witness who was before the National Assembly. Where is the source of this information in the document that was submitted to this House by the Speaker of the National Assembly? Where does it sit? Who seeks to suffer prejudice if the same is admitted? Is it a state organ or an individual in the name of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya? We urge you to uphold our ruling and justice be seen to be done, even to the people following these proceedings. I am most obliged. No, Honorable Senators, the second preliminary objection raised by the Council for the Deputy President was that the following documents which were submitted by the National Assembly on Monday the 14th of October 2024 were not part of the bundle of documents of the National Assembly that was served on the Deputy President on Wednesday the 9th of October 2024. These are an affidavit shown by Mr. Peterson Jomo Mushira and B, the document of the National Assembly marked as Volume 8A responses from various government agencies. Council for the Deputy President stated that these documents prejudiced the Deputy President's case and amounted to a trial by ambush by the National Assembly. Council urged the Senate to bar the introduction of these two documents as they constitute new evidence in terms of Rule 20 of Part 1 of the second schedule to the Senate standing orders. Council for the National Assembly opposed the preliminary objection raised by the Council for the Deputy President. Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, Rule 20 of Part 1 of the Second Schedule to the Senate Standing Orders provides, and I quote, in presenting its evidence, the Assembly shall not introduce any new evidence that was not part of the allegations against the President by the National Assembly as forwarded by the Speaker of the National Assembly to the Speaker of the Senate. As I indicated in my earlier communication, by a later dated 8th of October 2024, I received a bundle of documents and records of proceedings in the National Assembly in this matter. Thereafter, on the 9th of October 2024, pursuant to Rule 6 and 7 of Part 1 of the Second Schedule to the Senate Standing Orders, the Office of the Clerk of the Senate sent invitations to appear to both parties. The parties were required, amongst other things, to specify any other evidence to be relied on this matter. I will repeat that. The parties were required, amongst other things, to specify any other evidence to be relied on in this matter. In response to this invitation, on Monday 14th of October 2024, the National Assembly filed further documentation. Having analyzed the documentation submitted again as the grounds for the proposed impeachment, I find that the documents objected to constitute evidence in support of the allegations already made in the impeachment motion as received from the National Assembly. It is noteworthy that the parties were instructed when sending responses to indicate any other evidence to be relied on. Accordingly, the documents be referred to 
do not constitute new evidence, but form evidence in support of an allegation which was already made. This, that is why Rules 6 and 7 of the Rules of Procedure permit the Senate to receive witness statements, list of witnesses to be, to be invited by any, and any other evidence to buttress an allegation already made. What is not allowed is to introduce new allegations or to introduce any evidence that is extraneous to the allegations made in an impeachment motion. In the, in the event, it is my considered view that the affidavit and document marked as Volume 8A being referred to fall within the permissible documents of our rules or procedure. I therefore rule that the objection is hereby dismissed. Now, honorable senators, having dispensed with the preliminary matters in this particular hearing, we will now move to hear the Yes, Mi counsel for the National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, sir, with your very kind permission and indulgence, we, as well, on the part of the National Assembly, had two quick preliminary, preliminary issues which we wanted to draw your attention to, Mr. Speaker, sir. They are quick housekeeping issues. Uh, if you permit me just in two minutes, I may be able to draw, draw them to your attention. Exactly two minutes. Most of life, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, the first one is in relation to the bundle of documents that we have filed before this House to help it determine uh, the matter that is before it. In particular, we have one of our documents, or one of our volumes, volume four, as a document presented before this court, before this uh, honorable house. Mr. Speaker, sir, when we were perusing our documents earlier today, actually yesterday, we did realize that uh, one of the documents in that volume four, running from page 135 to 140, appears to have been inadvertently copied just on one part. In other words, in the course of a printing, we missed out the even numbers and just printed out the uh, odd numbers. Mr. Speaker, sir, we have since availed that document. It is not a new document. We, the only thing that had happened is that we forgot, or rather inadvertently, we didn't get the uh, uh, even numbers printed. We have since done that, Mr. Speaker, sir, and with your permission, we urge that we be allowed to rely on that document. We filed it, Mr. Speaker, sir, and served it to our uh, colleagues, counsel appearing for the, uh, His Excellency, the Deputy President, as well as to the House, that it may be relied upon. That is the first uh, uh, preliminary intervention that we seek. Mr. Speaker, sir, the second issue is in relation to a letter that we did to uh, yourself on the 14th of October, 2024 wherein we sought the help of this house through your office to have someone's issued to the CEO of the uh, Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission for purposes of helping uh, give testimony to matters that are before this house. Mr. Speaker, sir, the reason for us uh, seeking uh, this in a preliminary intervention is to ask formally that those summons, Mr. Speaker, sir, be issued so that the said witness could attend to help us determine the matters that are before you. We, in our letter, did indicate the specific item that is to testify to, and it is equally our humble plea that, that uh, an order be made that uh, summons do issue to have the CEO of uh, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission attend as a witness. I am most obliged, Mr. Speaker, sir. Counsel for the Deputy President. What say you? Much more speaker, honorable senators. With regard to the first request, which I understand to mean that when they were photocopying, some pages were left, we are going to examine that and see what was served on us and what those pages that are now being introduced uh, contain. With regard to summons to ask individuals from the Anti-Corruption Commission to come and give evidence, Moshimua Speaker, Honorable Members, we draw your attention to Article 50 of the Constitution which is a fulcrum of a fair trial. And this honorable house is executing a quasi-judicial function of the most weighty nature regarding the removal from office of the deputy 
President of the Republic of Kenya, elected by the people of Kenya. Nothing would be more prejudicial than to call witnesses whose statements or affidavits we have not seen. The whole purpose of affidavits and witness statements is to enable the other side, in this case, the deputy president, to seek legal advice, to give instructions on how best to respond to it. And this rubble house has fixed two days for this trial. And one of the issues we'll be raising is these allegations, and you are going to go through them, against the deputy president, suspicions, conclusions, on matters that we are never referred to DCI in Kiambu Road, who are trained to investigate these matters. Nothing was referred to the Anti-Corruption Commission or any of the other investigative agencies, including money laundering. We strongly object and ask that the record of this honorable house reflects that if this is permitted for the National Assembly to call witnesses at this stage without first furnishing us with their witness statements and affidavits, the case of the deputy president will be irredeemably prejudiced. So we object very strongly to that application. Council for National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, sir, in brief rejoinder to the objection by Landed Senior Counsel for the Deputy President. Mr. Speaker, sir, in the invitation to attend that was extended by this House to the National Assembly, the invitation included a request as to a list of witnesses the National Assembly required summoned. We responded to that request. And Mr. Speaker, sir, all we seek is a confirmation that our response has been actioned. What the uh, Learned Council for the Deputy President is objecting to is not our request, but really it is a response to a request made by this August House. I'm most obliged. Council for Deputy President, do I get it that you have no problem with the first request made by the National Assembly? Mr. Speaker, we would want to see those pages. And that time we'll be able to say yes or no. It is a uh, second one. Clark, has that document been made available to the Deputy uh, President's uh, team? Kindly, in the next uh, few seconds, make it available so that we make progress. Honorable Senators, if there's any Senator who has not gotten that document, you may also let the Chair know so that we supply you with uh, that document. Senator Mazayo, Senator Olekena, Senator Miraj, Senator Kavindu, Crystal Lasigia, Senator Kajuang. Honorable Speaker, if I may, with your permission, just um, to highlight one point based on uh, what my learned friends for the National Assembly have said. The letter they refer to is a letter dated the 14th of October 2024. It is addressed uh, to the Honorable Speaker of the Senate by the Clerk of the National Assembly. 
the letter does not contain any information about any other witnesses being sought. It does not indicate that the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission will be asked to produce any other witness, affidavits, or documents. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, sir, if I may. Just uh, take your seat for a minute. Senior Counsel Paul Mwite, are you in receipt of the document now? Mwashimwa Speaker, this document, we are seeing it for the first time now, three, four minutes ago. And it has got many, many pages, so we were quickly going through it and in order to save the time of this honorable house, perhaps you can give us an opportunity to go through these documents, because we need to go through them. But let's go through, through it. Perhaps if you agree, Mwashimwa Speaker, perhaps we can get on with the first prosecution witness giving evidence, and as soon as we've gone through this, then we shall come back to you, much more Speaker. Thank you for your wisdom, Senior Counsel. Now, uh, the other name that has been raised is on the issue of summons to witnesses. Now, if you look at our rules of procedure, more particularly rule number 10, which provides as follows, that the Senate may, at the request of the National Assembly or the President, and in this particular matter, the Deputy President, invite or summon any person to appear and give evidence before the Senate. So the summons that have been sought are in line with the spirit of Rule 10 of our Rules of Procedure. You may attack the evidence when these particular witnesses who have been summoned if their evidence introduces other allegations, then at that particular uh, juncture, 
the legal team from the deputy president, you may raise an issue, and I'll certainly hear you at that juncture. Uh, permit me, Mwajimwa Speaker, to place it on record that the rules of this honorable Senate must and have to be respected. But even above respecting the rules of this honorable house, our constitution has to be respected. Article 50, the right to a fair trial, which in terms of Article 25C, Mwashimua Speaker, you will remember, you are aware, that is a right that cannot be compromised in any manner. There has been no explanation why the EACC was, in, was never asked to investigate the allegations before they were tabled before the National Assembly and before a decision was taken. Because the National Assembly cannot investigate criminal offenses. In fact, in implementing Chapter 6 of the Constitution, the Act of Parliament said that conviction is necessary. And now, you want to reverse the will of the Kenyan people in electing the deputy president without him being reported or the matter being investigated or him being convicted. Mweshimua Speaker, I plead that you reconsider your exercise of that discretion in permitting witnesses from the EACC to be called in order for the deputy president to have a fair trial before this Senate. Thank you. Senior Counsel Paul Mwite, you... Mweshimua Speaker. You're actually arguing your case. What I said, there was some invitation that was sent to both parties. And each party was requested to submit a list of witnesses. The National Assembly submitted a list of witnesses with a request under Rule 10 of our rules procedure for the Senate to summon. That is the request that has just been made by the National Assembly, and it is permissible and it is within our rules of procedure. Mr. Speaker, you are and, uh, Senior Counsel Paul Mwite, I will refer you to rule number 30 of our rules of procedure, where the ruling of the Speaker is final. So let's, lay, let's leave the matter there. I've made my ruling. Let's make progress, Senior Counsel. Mr. Mwashimwa Speaker, I agree entirely. You are the one sitting in the seat of power. Your word is final. I have said what I've said. Your rules are subject to the Constitution. I accept your ruling. Now we'll move to the second limb of this uh, hearing. Honorable Clerk, you may now proceed to call the next order. Summons to issue to those witnesses. Order number two, hearing and determination on the proposed removal from office by impeachment of His Excellency Rigadi Gachagua, EGH Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Now, Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to move to the opening statements. Each party will have exactly half an hour to make their opening statement starting with the Council for the National Assembly. Your time starts running from now. <laughs> 